I'm Jonathan Larson with TYT Investigates, and we've got a little bit of breaking news this morning. A federal judge has ordered the shutdown of the Dakota Access Pipeline. Of course, you, you probably remember the uh, Dakota Access Pipeline, whether or not to build it. This was, this was the subject of lots of protests, the Standing Rock sta standoffs, right? Uh, hundreds of people were arrested, lots of injuries. Um, militants were called out against peaceful protesters. This has been a big deal. The pipeline, of course, going through lands that are sacred to Sioux tribes that they rely on for their water, for clean water, for safe water, not just for drinking, but also for agriculture, for religious practices. A judge today saying that the pipeline must shut down. So uh, the Bismarck Tribune has reaction from some of the Sioux leaders. So I want to I want to read some of the details that we have coming out um, from from the Bismarck Tribune. According to Standing Rock chairman, the uh, the ruling today they they were they filed these lawsuits challenging the the pipeline, trying to prevent a potential environmental disaster in the event of a leak. Referring to today's ruling, Mike Faith again, this is the Standing Rock Sioux chairman said, "Quote for the tribe's sake, it is good news. I think for downstream users, it's good news also." Here's from the Tribune a little background on the, on today's ruling. According to the Tribune, quote, the $3.8 billion pipeline built by developer Energy Transfer has been moving back in oil, um, that's the shale oil uh, up there, to a shipping point in Illinois for three years. But U.S. District Judge James Bosberg, who is overseeing the lawsuit a couple months ago, back in March, ordered the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to complete a full environmental impact statement. It was never done. A full environmental impact statement was never completed prior to the pipeline being ordered. So he ordered this back in March, but the question was, would the pipeline continue to be able to operate until the um, environmental impact st statement was completed? Bosberg's ruling today said, nope, if we don't know it's safe, you don't get to operate it. The study is expected to take 13 months. So we're talking now at least about 13 months of shutting it down, no oil moving through it. That's according to the ruling from Bozberg today. It shall begin, he wrote, I'm quoting now from the ruling via the Bismarck Tribune, quote, Dakota Access shall shut down the pipeline and empty it of oil by August 5th, 2020, roughly one month from now. So they've got one month to empty out the pipeline and then it stays clean, it stays dry, it stays empty for an estimated 13 months at least. After which we should have an actual full environmental impact statement from the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, according to the Tribune, about 40% of the state's daily production before the pandemic hit of oil um, comes through the Dakota Access Pipeline. We're talking about 570,000 uh, barrels of oil every day. Now, um, that's obviously a huge economic hit for North Dakota. So why would the judge do this? Quote, he said, the court is forced to conclu conclude that the flow of oil must cease given the seriousness of the Corps' error, the Army Corps of Engineers' error, presumably not having done the full environmental impact statement, given the impossibility of a simple fix, but also given the fact that Dakota Access assumed much of its economic risk knowingly. In other words, they knew going ahead that they would face legal challenges. You can't take on that risk and say afterwards, well, but this'll, this'll hurt me. That was the risk you were willing to take. Here it is. You took it, here it is. And of course, turns out this matters, the potential harm each day the pipeline operates. This is Bozberg writing. He's saying the flow must stop because of the potential harm each day the pipeline operates. All right, there's a few more things that I wanted to share from this. Um, uh, of course, the environmental impact statement should include stakeholders, including the Sioux people, right? Faith, this is the Standing Rock chairman, told the Bismarck Tribune he is now calling for, quote, true consultation, face to face, he says, with the Army Corps of Engineers in completing the environmental impact statement. Why? So that the points they raise don't get just, 
don't just get shoved under the carpet. He said the Standing Rock tribe, quote, is going to do its best to work with the Corps to take a hard look during the EIS process. He predicted, quote, the bottom line of all this is that the EIS, that's the Environmental Impact Statement, will probably tell us that they should have used a different route in the first place that did not affect Sioux Nation treaty rights. One little footnote here, which is kind of amazing. The ruling comes, today's federal court ruling comes as Energy Transfer, that's the company that owns and operates this pipeline, seeks to nearly is seeking to nearly double the capacity of the pipeline to carry 1.1 million barrels per day of oil. This is at a time when the price of oil doesn't merit it. We don't we don't need more oil. We have too much. We are literally in a glut. That is why prices are low. And it's not just it's not just that demand has been suppressed by the coronavirus, but P.S. it has been suppressed by the coronavirus. That is a real thing. And thanks to the ineptitude of the executive branch of the federal government, that's going to be a real thing for a while. So this idea that we urgently need more oil, no, we don't. We don't. In fact, it's hurting us, not just in the pipeline, but when it gets through the pipeline and gets burned up and goes into the atmosphere and helps destroy our environment and further climate change. So I know this story, I haven't done a lot of reporting on Standing Rock, but I know this story is really important to TYT's audience and it's a really important story on its own merits, but I wanted to make sure that uh, you guys saw this and were aware of this, that, that the struggle has continued, right? It hasn't gotten the headlines anymore. It hasn't been uh, big, loud protests, which of course galvanized support that made this possible, but what it's been is the legal battle. And it's been going on and grinding back and forth with legal filings back and forth and back and forth, out of the headlines, virtually no one paying attention. Today a judge spoke, and today, for a year at least, there's a victory with a hope, a hope of permanent victory on the horizon. Thanks uh, for being me here, joining me for the update, and uh, take care of each other, take care of yourselves. Bye now, guys.